2020 yesterday, but the following um, audio video, as I promised, I will do for you the following day. Well, it was released yesterday on my new site. However, dates back to my birth date, December the 9th of 2020. Well, my birthday would be in 71, but this is 2020, but really, December the 9th uh, is when this stuff was recorded. This is, this is quite some time back into the past. Uh, I do have interesting stuff, never mind. I don't release everything immediately. I release here and there, whatever I feel it's um, would fit the proper timing. Sometimes you have to submit yourself to different political currents, wherever. Uh, I had a set of things they wanted me to release during Donald Trump's presidential campaign, but it was not handy to me. So I set that stuff aside, it's gonna come. And I have some really, really interesting stuff related straight to the issue I'm about to discuss today. And uh, this video, well, this video is related to who exactly from the novel, from the novel Mesto City was involved in MK Ultra locally. Like people from my town, from my city, in the city of the novel Mesto, who are these people? Um, you know, they brought me from United States from 95 all the way to mid-2006 and uh, I'm about to reveal partially only okay just a few people you're gonna hear uh, I did talk to you a lot about actually I did not there is a whole a lot of stuff I have not spoken about because it would be more than not this is very difficult from the beginning when you have a case as big like this just to start off, it's probably the hardest thing to go about because how can you prove all this? I mean, how would somebody, how would you go about to prove all this stuff and all this? You have to do it somehow from the memory. Uh, well, luckily for me, there were nice people. They came my way to greet me, to give me support. And uh, this just happened to be a group, a local group here from Nova Mesa. So just the beautiful people. I like them, I personally like them. Um, whenever uh, they had like a dislike for me, uh, whatever, they didn't mind to stress me uh, in whichever form. Some Sometimes it was not really pleasant, but to tell you the truth, I got so used to it, whatever. On uh, some occasion it was, uh, it was, actually this is like really nice people. Okay, I don't have nothing negative to say about uh, I appreciate their honesty back then and I appreciate their honesty now. These people did not play on me dirty tricks of any kind. Uh, they liked me a lot, but at the same time they stood up for something that, you know, oftentimes we just take this like for granted. It's what our parents, grandparents left to us behind and uh, you're talking about freedom you're talking about the values post World War II values which we have inherited from them and sometimes we take this stuff so automated that we disregard uh, you know the struggle the need for the struggle we should stick to and it just happened to me so because of level of politician of the political sphere that entered my private life not that I would want one uh, it's exactly the opposite I did absolutely everything in my life to protect my privacy my life my my right to pursue my life the way I wanted to uh, but that just didn't happen my personality 
on outside the personality in real life completely totally differed from personality in uh, under MK Ultra. These are like a two completely completely different uh, totally totally opposed personalities did not match I'm gonna say one another in I'm gonna say absolutely anyway in any way at all I am gonna tell like this to my friends from Serbia and it's where I supposedly had made yeah whatever I did in year 2006 when I returned back from the US in my real life I have attempted to register a political party which name was Pranova in Slovenian translated from Slovenian language it would be like a renovation and it was specifically written statute for this political party that would equal all the members of society as equal that would not differentiate give any privileges of any kind to anybody regardless of the people's race racial background religion and so on this is just a matter of fact the statute was actually I have published one also on Slovenian uh, national broadcasting uh, on, a, on a TV on a forum publicly created a website and I was moving in that direction in Belgrade, in the city of Belgrade, capital of Serbia, I did search for, uh, I was hoping it's going to become my wife. That was in 2006, when I came back, uh, I would go through the online dating, and I contacted, I have no idea how many females from Serbia. I just happened so that I bumped into some Serbian girl over there in Miami. In Miami Beach and um, she engaged with some Italian guy and then I came back and I don't know uh, I was uh, interested in something like this uh, then bad things continue to follow up in me in real life and I became more and more and more and more radicalized uh, one set of uh, problems after another and another and another and another uh, till like some six years down the road I just uh, had completely distorted view uh, on this whole thing really in 2011 uh, I could say I was no longer recognizable I did not match my personality anymore with personality from the past I was just basically angry that politicians pushed forward something they wanted I guess to prove uh, their political careers dependent on that but this is just this is just a bunch of facts this is just a matter of fact when your personality differs so much from reality if you are subjected to MK Ultra like mine did I would just go and just insult people like for the sport whatever people would play with your feelings nothing is worse than play with your feelings when you have a thousand women flirting with you and uh, just so they can go with another guy sometimes already married and they flirted and all kinds of stuff like this just to hurt your feelings and all kinds of stuff it was like this uh, then and you know this is like something really not the worst yeah, the methods I'm going to talk about in following videos involved German shepherds, involved the dogs. They would have them jump toward you and, uh, you know, display teeth, you know, barking and people threatening you. They're going to turn you apart if you're going to even come close to the house where they live after they threatened you and with the stuff like that. This kind of stuff. Um, when your life differs so much 
on the MKUltra from the one you live in reality. You don't commit any kind of offense, anything, any kind of form of discrimination, anything that anyone could charge you with and stuff. There is something not right with that MKUltra. This is just exactly it was the case with me. I wanted to pursue the police career uh, and the politicians wanted me to see myself as a criminal a little bit. They wanted me, they wanted to convince me during MKUltra that I'm just simply no good. It's just, it becomes more than struggle and I'm just happy. I'm, I feel fortunate that I was that strong. Uh, obviously that when it's so much that differs from the real life of the person, uh, then it's not the person that's actually doing this kind of stuff. Then it's the politicians that do this kind of stuff through the person to get some other things done. You know, too bad that people, when you ask them, that I saw many broken hearts, I saw many people hurt, many people got hurt through to me. Uh, they would not do that basic thing and. and involve police in it because of the simple reason which person under MK Ultra does not understand and would never understand because it was the police alone that ran these things. So the group you're about to hear right now and I'm going to do the complete translation are the people who also are uh, acquainted with the police work. They are the people like a civil society extension of the police uh, in Slovenia. It's not just the regular people. They're really, really nice young people and in my opinion the way I see it is this is the stuff I don't mind at all. This is the kind of friendships I'm looking forward to. I'm not looking running away from anybody or from anything because I haven't done anything. I, I have no reason to run from anything. I have no reason to hide anything from anyone. And so me around people like this who managed to keep, they really did manage to keep their sanity uh, totally in line with what I earlier uh, mentioned were expectations. Our parents, grandparents left to us as far as the post-World War II legacy um, is just completely outstanding. It's really, really a nice company to be around, uh, to celebrate life with, to exchange ideas and so on. Nice people, and for that matter, uh, they were used by many, uh, recognized also. They were recognized by Russians, they were recognized by Serbs, they were recognized by Bosnians, they were recognized by, uh, by all the governments, uh, not only in Eastern Europe, but also Western Europe. Uh, Ljubljana used them uh, oftentimes also as a means of transport abroad. And in this audio recording, you're going to hear me conversing with this little group. You're going to hear one guy talking about Morocco. You're going to hear one guy talking about uh, Burma, uh, you're gonna hear one uh, also him talk about Thailand uh, in a following audio recording which I will also release. Okay, the following probably is gonna be translation of the audio which I have released two days ago, but then the following I will concentrate also on individual that I'm gonna, I have proofs, more proofs about that as I stated, by 2015, I believe, or 2015, I think it was more, I was told, I think it was more than 1,200, that's more than 1,200 people inside, us, inside of this little room, folks. This is just a little, little room from all over the world. Now, the guy, I'm going to release the video, audio, I have met him. It's also related to the psychiatric hospital in Ljubljana. Uh, actually, in particular, to the half-Serbian psychologist 
Dr. Zoran Muja. Hello. Uh, and was also one of the first people who got involved with it right here in City of the Novel Mesto. And uh, you had this international crew coming. If I look at the map real fast, maybe the girl that he got involved with it, as this is really outstanding stuff, you know. Maybe she was from, I she she was either from Indonesia or she was from Philippines. But I'm gonna tell you what, I think she was actually Philippines. She was not. She was, I'm sure, from Indonesia, either Indonesia or Malaysia. Malaysia or Indonesia and um, what I can tell you is he separated from her because of I have no idea what I was uh, according to him because of what I was talking all kinds of BS like a monkey on that MK Ultra. the two eventually the first it was like how proud they are together then they broke apart um, Then he started to fear actually for alimony issues uh, through the British Crown because of this case they opened her instead the door, the entry to Australia where she ended, if you want to test my memory. So this is actually something he never told me about and I just happened to have this beautiful audio recording that I will release then in, in the following video. So what you're talking about, she was like a government related person, huh? this is what I'm trying to to, to explain what you're going to hear you're going to hear me you're going to hear other people talking about uh, you know all kinds of locations worldwide uh, but it was also people from all over the world that would come it was a Filipino people a beautiful Filipinos and uh, all kinds of people that would find their way to this little room not only this little city here but inside of this room not that I had anything with them, I wish, but it didn't happen. So I'm just trying to give you an idea of the amplitude of this case. This case is like colossal, the biggest ever high profile case. This is like you would say almost the World War III in a single human being stuff that I have seen I don't think anybody ever did and I did manage to see inside of human souls of some people that you only get to read uh, in the media you only get to see them on a the TV and so on and I had this opportunity to actually see inside of them not that I would want this to happen, but it just did turn out so awkward. So, um, so I'm going to release that video right after I do the translation for the other video. That's an interesting one, so you're going to see that. Uh, since this is about local crew here from Novo Mesto that would provide me, let's say, with an escort. When I was dropped up, they would escort me around. Definitely, they would guide me oftentimes here because under MK Ultra they have you walk to the drugs they use. They always make sure that you do your walk, that you exercise. They don't. They don't. They didn't. Uh, it didn't happen that I would be just uh, unless they left me in some place like Trump did in Poland when I, they left me at one hospital over there for just drugged up for like four days. I don't know what they brought me from the US for is what I was told by people in the side of the hospital alone. They were angry with Donald Trump when stuff like this happened and it did happen stuff like that too. Uh, and sometimes they would provide me also with the trips uh, abroad, they would they would provide an escort. They would they were trusted people, and very very pleasant people. No, that's basically what I can tell you. One of the individuals, uh, let's you know what, let's just go along this uh, audio recording, and I'm gonna do the complete translation. So 
I do so, I, I, I'm doing this kind of stuff in hope that I assemble this group together before the New Year's date because I don't want them to, I did not disclose the location, anything like this. Uh, I don't want to become a reason for these people to, <laughs> to be indefinitely locked and unsocial now because of me or something like that. I, this is exactly the opposite. I have no intentions of that kind of any kind like that. Uh, so I'm going to hurry up now a little bit with this video and push forward. Uh, let's go with audio recording then, in that case. I walk in an unspecified location in the city of the Novo Mesto in Slovenia. Just as you see on the map, uh, Slovenia is right here, and then you have these little countries around. And let's go. Right, Slovenia, uh, city of the Novo Mesto, you have a bunch of countries around here. I walk, 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 walk. And I meet my friends, and we go about December 9. This is my birthday. This is a present to me for my birthday. People like to ask. Uh, questions. Uh, I say good evening to the group. You, you were able to hear uh, questions. People ask questions like if I remember, like like when they meet me again. It's like they <laughs> they know you know them, but they wanna. They're like, uh, let's see if you remember who in this city you were with. Let's see if you re let's see if you remember um, where you if you remember where you stayed in the city and stuff like this they they like to do that so the other day when i was asked by someone this question uh i was not surprised about that even a little bit i kind of figure out okay and then in that case that gives some more uh proofs about who how and this these are the proofs they just basically really it was my it was a birthday present to me they just straight walk to me on my on my table better than a cake good evening hello hello I uh, like to joke and I tell them a coronavirus arrived and they say what I say coronavirus coronavirus arrived Uh, the dog comes to me. Oh, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful dog. Uh, and I just happen to love dogs unconditionally. And she came to me and brought me something to play with. This is yet another great reason to be around them. I get to pet the dog every time. Not a big deal. They're talking about somebody was thirsty, that somebody was thirsty, and uh, the one guy says he have a, like a request for the coffee. He would like to have a coffee, please. Coffee to go, coffee to go. Uh, it's really holidays now in December month. You can imagine nobody's really happy to be locked at home. 
people are social in Slovenia. This is a very social group, friends. And uh, nobody, this is a horrific punishment, actually, really. Everybody wants to go out and have a good time. You're talking about the young people here. Um, young, uh, young at heart. These people are always going to stay kids, I think. And that's a good thing. Like myself, we don't want to grow up, probably. It's the best day. Uh, the best the best is to stay young i think too i agree with them ah uh, the girl um she says oh you're also not allowed to smoke yeah it's all forbidden now everywhere in the nature no in the nature probably not but in the city and I take the masks, and they, they, many of them don't carry masks. Yeah, they bother police, and the police have to catch them because they have the mask and stuff. People are not considerate for one another. True. If you're running and you have a much greater Okay, exhaust, whatever. You should definitely have a mask so that you don't infect other people. And people do that and they are without with, with bicycles and they don't respect rules and so on. Everybody up or everybody down is what he's saying, which is completely true. This is nice. I tell them, I, 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 I tell them, I tell them, you know, this is this is just a big business. You know, what they're doing is actually a business without a presidency. You know? um, and I remind them because it's wow. Uh, we have stores here in Norway and stuff that are they would not allow you uh, to purchase from them electronic equipment. They are open. Make no mistake about that, but they will not allow you to purchase electronic, either electronic equipment or whatever kind of equipment. They only would sell you across the counter. They would also at the counter. They would also only sell you like uh, cons consumption. Uh, oh, actually, now I we did bought two toys at the local store, so they did release that finally. It's a good thing. It's, I was really worried about people that depend on these electronic gadgets, uh, people who are without the heaters, teapots, uh, and you know, then you have nowhere you can purchase other than through the internet. You know, everybody should go to the internet. So I try to make a point, yeah, really everybody is just making money out of this, and especially the one that's making more money than any then others are these big corporations, big companies we always buy from, like eBay, Amazon, and so on. So it's a business, in my in my in my opinion, it's a business. For the small people, it's a loss, but for the big people, it's a business. I tell them. Yeah, I mentioned Amazon profits skyrocketed with the coronavirus issues. You got to admit, this is crazy. I mean, that rules are pointed in a direction where you can only purchase through the internet and not in any existing stores. People don't even have owners of the stores don't even have the money to cover expenses and so on. So I cut portion of the recording, the original recording is on.
I just try to concentrate on important issues and uh, explain as much as wh whatever is relevant uh, in this video. But the original audio recording already was posted online yesterday. Okay, uh, the guy does something on a chair. Uh, this is this is like a round chair, like a bar chair, and tells that uh, this thing is moving, uh, and they're gonna talk about uh, a restaurant, uh, pizza pizzeria. We say pizzeria, a pizza restaurant called San Sebastian. Uh, San Sebastian was already before I left to the US and just I think yesterday in my uh, video I stated that one no longer exists. So why did I state this? Well to tell you the truth because I did not ever go. I never go to the city. I never go anywhere because if I go I only go for a walk. It's very seldom you will meet me in the city. Um, Unless if I meet with someone or something like this, this very, very seldomly happens, really. I kind of leave to finish this case, really, get my life back so I can move on in my life. I don't want to go and mix pleasures with life like this, let's put it this way. I like to have these issues organized. And so I suggested that it was closed in 2004, 2005, because this group of the people told me they're gonna close down this before you will come. Well, I'm gonna demonstrate this the restaurant. What I will demonstrate to you is gonna be eventually um, the restaurant. I just uh, mentioned right now San Sebastian. at which location however there was like uh, electric horse that's like a horse now they don't mention any of this but they would bring me time and again to this place and they would ride this horse and this horse moved like really 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 quickly uh you know the idea is that like a rodeo horse you sit on it and just move this chair moves back and forth does movement but when a, in a certain location right that's where these moves are produced yeah, of course it's still it doesn't move anywhere uh, it's just moving this sit back and forth now they told me when you're gonna if you would try something like this you wouldn't last few seconds on it because you're gonna have a broken spine I shouldn't even say that now because this takes to another issue for which I also have many proofs. Everything on time. Um, there was a knowledge about that stuff. Other people try this. That God forbid you would go on something like this with a uh, with a disc spot with a disc problem or something like that. Really, you could really end up really in hospital, whatever. And that's probably what they refer to me as that uh, it was gone from this restaurant probably sometimes. They, they told me it's gonna be gone just before you're gonna return back. Okay, so that's probably what they took away uh, from this place. With this thing they told me that you're gonna remember, you know, this like I said, these are, these are, these are actually my friends. These are not, these are not uh, some kind of, um, that I would say, I don't know what. It was right behind this thing. You see this podium here, I think, and it was then behind this thing. It was like on the floor of this thing, and uh, they sit there and they try their luck. Who's gonna stay longer on this? Uh, what is this electronic rodeo? I don't know. Rodeo chair, rodeo chair, electronic, that, that, this kind of stuff. It did not look like this, though. It didn't look like this. It was like... 
uh, it was like uh, yeah something really literally built to break your spine if you have by any chance this problem it was in this sense and it would move back and forth meow, 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 meow. but it didn't quite look like this this is quite comfortable actually when I see that that stuff was very I think uncomfortable now when I have a problem with the spine uh, it actually even appears to me as scary even the thought the idea that you would go and you would use something like this uh, or rather I pursue now this is crazy but don't think that this was my idea um, under MK Ultra. Under MK Ultra I was always the invincible uh, and uh, it never took much uh, to insult somebody and it didn't matter what kind of degree what uh, what kind of threats then I, w I was faced with uh, it probably would really really was just a matter of time before I would be back with my personality in the picture and somebody else would get whipped uh, this is just my personality under MK Ultra. I would just go and just pick the fights uh, with whatever. Uh, in a real life, this is not what I was ever. I was, I think, the most polite person, the most polite person you possibly could come across. You know, if I possibly could only, if I could help you out, I definitely would help you out. It didn't match. That one one personality was like this, another personality was uh, completely different, and nobody could understand what what is going on. Uh, eventually, psychiatrists alone started to apologize to me. Um, they said that this is not. Th we did not know that this is going to turn like this. But it did, and it turned in a, such a bad thing that their apologies didn't do any good, uh, and they had no authority, anything whatsoever that could help, nor to me, not to them. Um, it was all controlled by the politicians, and what was a game grew into something completely different, uh, left more and more hurt people behind. Now whether you want it or not you had to take this side or you would you would become I don't know enemy of the people or something like that this is just this is basically just the way it is so oh so he's talking about this chair actually he does not mention the chair he does not mention anything about the place that I stated it's called San Sebastian which I have demonstrated to you. I have also demonstrated where this chair was. It was right after this podium. Um, we're gonna do this real, 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 real fast. I'm just gonna do it like this. Simple, look, a podium you have seen uh, this one here, this, and after the podium, right in the corner like this, and what I can recall was this electric rodeo chair. And we go, wow, 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 when people would mom themselves on it just to get hurt, whatever. And I guarantee them when I come back, I will never fall down. Uh, nobody and nothing is going to get me off that chair, whatever. Whatever I was telling about in my MK Ultra uh, world to the people. Uh, so what he's doing, he's using like a bar chair, and he is making a twist like that. And so what I do is I remind myself, oh yeah, this is where you guys would take me. Yeah, there's a young, back then they were younger, and they're very social people. You're going to hear them talk about the disco places. You're going to hear them talk about like, eh, this is not really like a nightclubs, but yeah, you could, you could meet guy over there. Uh, or a girlfriend, uh, you know, where young people meet, um, type of the stuff.
very social, they go out, they date, they have fun, hopefully. And yeah, oftentimes they took me with them. I was drugged up, no fun. Okay, um, to have fun, they had fun, I did not have fun. Uh, for me, MKUltra, this was like the worst thing. But it's a really, really funny thing because my personality is like soft personality. It's a nice personality. Um, and for that matter, this is the reality. People always exploited this. They always exploited this and they took advantage. They, they just, they wanted to play with you like unlimited because you were always, you always somehow climbed nice back into uh, your scheme. And you continue to be nice until somebody else drops you some kind of bomb again, uh, and and so on and so forth. So this this is the stuff that basically repeated for no less than 23 years, folks. Now this 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 guys this group. This is just a really really nice group. I was happy to be around them. If I would not be around them, uh, it would be some other asshole that would get me. And you have no idea what kind of assholes I came across. This MK Ultra, this is a procedure that it's not only the person that is tortured that suffers. All through the world, like thousands of people involved in this stuff, thousands of people had opportunity to interact with me during MK Ultra. This is no interacting with the soul of anyone. This is just MK Ultra, that's all there is. Um, and I had no way to properly respond to those uh, altercations. Uh, they alone oftentimes became affected with this. Whether they were concerned for me, they decided unconditionally to pledge their support for me, which most of the people did because they realized this was no laughing matter. Uh, but in some cases you had a completely crazy people. Uh, taken over with uh, hatred, uh, resentment, uh, lost control completely and uh, became psychotic. And the worst part about it is that the state, which observed all this stuff, followed up on them and then before you know some disappeared and this and that. Stuff like this happens, folks. Um, some others just got, let's say, affected mentally about having the right to handle somebody like a, like a dog, basically, a human being. These people are always so nice. Huh? Now, now, if I did make a problem, like the case was the guy's going to talk about the Sarajevo, I liked Sarajevo, I always wanted to go to Sarajevo, I wanted to see the Sarajevo, I want to go there, I uh, want to have fun and this and that. The thing about it is that this, that this, this MK Ultra, this, this is so upside down that you have no idea. Again, there was a conflict over there, not in the Sarajevo city only, but outside of the Sarajevo. Uh, he's going to say like, uh, when we were talking about, if I created a problem, then they also made sure that I got my share of shit I created. And so yes, there was a, a group of guys over there too that they did all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, to prove their point, you know, their tough point against me on the MKL tree. It was a stuff like that. I really didn't take that to, uh, to the heart. I don't. I don't. Uh, I. I don't. I don't have this kind of resentment. I understand. Uh, I understand people because I know that the only way to survive is to actually understand people. Whether you like it or not, this is also purpose in our lives. Um, unless it was some really, really, really um, abusive, 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 abusive stuff that would go on. Uh, like stuff that they would do something some really really bad stuff to you and then they would 
use let's say dogs and stuff like this they would have them and a lot have them launching you holding them threaten you that if you're gonna come close that they're just gonna uh, rip you apart and stuff like this don't actually when you walk the street don't even look at this hole and stuff like this and then they follow up with the stuff like this in post MK Ultra uh, always however those kind of people it was like a high-tech provocations I would say were related to the politicians they were never like a single act like uh, loner cases or something like this that somebody would be so evil that would go and want to do something like this it never was like this there always was a group of people uh, like organized by the certain politicians who would demand certain things from certain people at a certain dots whether that be a Czech Republic, you were able to hear one time about the dog how it was launching a huge shepherd. Uh, it was it was another another dog in another part of the Czech Republic that would literally go with his punks teeth and break off pieces of fence, literally. I'm not gonna say that he chewed them, but he would grab into the fence and tear apart literally huge dog I would go daily next to that dog and you could see the pieces of that fence basically would just be ripped away from the fence and stuff like this but the owner I did not forget what he did to me when I was drugged up when I could not defend myself and he was threatening me like half an hour with this dog and stuff like this now there were other locations in Lodz uh, in Poland and so on and so forth did not even have to happen in Slovenia it was enough that people in Slovenia knew about what went on in Poland or Czech Republic and have used that kind of knowledge to give you I don't know what kind of uh, threats and dra 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 uh, and play just a little bit with the dogs in front of you threaten you and stuff like this that you would remember the person and uh, maybe support that kind of stuff with some other tensions like the case was lately and so on and so forth to trigger in you because they do this in post MK Ultra a curiosity just exactly what did the person meant when you were drugged up with his actions toward me toward society uh, look, I think I was a number one advocate of people's rights for the last four years. I think that I do deserve that number one spot because nobody was as direct with the politicians. Nobody, nobody did what I did. Uh, and so the question here is because you were confronted with this kind of issues in MK Ultra, which they claim was related to something completely different actually the opposite opposing to my present views what kind of meaning does this have now than repeating this kind of stuff in a post MK Ultra period obviously that none other than creating attention creating a conflict so that they could push forward some other issues and so on present this to the politicians as job done as they were required to do um, you know that kind of stuff so that's all, that's all, that's all I'm saying. Let's continue with recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's saying it's just this thing is just is is on a it's just it's just it's moving but it's still only in one dot. <laughs> this thing is on springs and it still keeps still, does not move anywhere. It's like a it's like a ball basically, right? It's a seat and that thing is just moves back and forth. Still in one place and uh, with the springs moving this seat so the people fell off. But he does not say that, but I know what he is saying, so I wanna say to my friends right now I want to say thank you very much for reminding me of San Sebastian apparently that thing no longer really exists since maybe I don't know 2004 this is what I was told 
the restaurant I saw it still is there uh, so uh, that's there you have another proof if I would not be there with them I would not I would not recall any of that stuff You can already in the in the school also is uh, painful. Uh, they they have a bad cheers fifth six hours and you have a pain. So they don't even talk about. They don't say anything about anything about they had the rodeo cheer in this San Sebastian. Okay, they just mentioned San Sebastian. And the guy does uh, in this bar chair, he moves like this, holds himself into that. He just reminds me of that. These guys wanted to help. They were in it to help me out. And so that's basically the rescue mission of me. Okay, let's do this stuff. Okay, the girl says she used to work in a bakery in Ljubljana. Oh, this is a really interesting girl, by the way. Uh, really interesting. This is this is a, a interesting young group. Let's continue with this. With a bus. Who is she talk about bus? Uh, Um, they talk now about Australia. The guy, the, the guy touches the issue of Australia. Now we're gonna get to Burma. Now we're gonna get to Myanmar and so on. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how people hold on 15, 16 hours on a plane. It's tough. This is not easy. Uh, she says to me it's not hard the girl says and the guy the guy says to her ask boys what I have gone through when I had to fly to Morocco yeah just uh, I don't know maybe three weeks ago or something like this I have written about a couple uh, the Morocco uh, gentleman and Slovenian girl uh, how they met oh I was uh, oftentimes in Morocco uh, through Italian government and uh, then uh, there you have the guy is also talking about Morocco now okay it's not that our people here in Slovenia that, that would not fly to Morocco. Uh, here, a lot of people from Europe fly to Morocco. Uh, they fly to Northern Africa. They fly mm, the stuff that you're going to hear, Burma and stuff like that. Now, that does not happen so often because you need a lot of cash because it's not so... You have to know what you're doing, really. Um, but you have this, Australia, Morocco, let's go on. Um, pay attention to the girl now. The girl says the best to me was when we were 
We went with a train, she says, when I went with a train. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, the bakery, the girl, the bakery. Ugh. I actually should even know which bakery was because she would give me she would give me a donut. I think that bakery was actually located in Ljubljana in um, in my opinion that was located on a uh, next to the bus station in, in a bus station. I did not even ask her about any of that stuff. Hopefully that uh, and the coronavirus is not gonna lock them up uh, hopefully that this stops soon uh, yeah next to this uh, but this was a store I remember it was it was it was uh, like a bakery store where she would serve this uh, it was donut and stuff and now she's gonna tell how the best of her was with a train. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, it's like this, the girl, the girl, it's like this about the girl, about this girlie. She, <sighs> either she finished her high school and she had to do the stuff like this, and the possibility even exists that she went and started to do the sales of this uh, bakery products in Ljubljana uh, I don't know why but in my head is that she was like really 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 young she was like completely completely freshman heading to Ljubljana to sell the bakery it was like very very unusual to me now she's talking about the train how she went to Ljubljana okay and on that train she was with uh, there's no uh, co-pilot, but it's in a in a cabin where this train, not attendant, but uh, driver is located in a up front in this train, and she got to stay with him. Well, unfortunately, I was on that train too. This happened in 2012, and I say unfortunately because I was on my way to mental hospital in 2012. She was on her way, uh, I don't know where. Uh, so if I take this, because the guy is going to say later on that she's like really, really young and this and that, and uh, then in that case, I suppose that, <clears throat> that if I would calculate her age based on this information, huh, I would get to about age 30 it's where I would estimate she's not that young she she looks like very young but she's not quite that young she's like about 28 30 maybe even older um, take that for a note I will not say anything more than that uh, first job that she had in Dublana the first job that she had in Ljubljana was actually literally on a bus station. It was one of those cheap looking kiosks. Then she moved a little further from there and that was actually a real bakery shop. That was like on like a classy bakery shop. So the first shop was on Ljubljana on a bus station, train station, train station also, bus station. She lived there for some time, and that's like a really, really busy place. So many people came, and everybody wanted a donut, whatever. And then she would move to 
like a classy shot but she spent working in that place for some time she was working I have I don't remember for how long in that shop she might have worked maybe even I don't know maybe two years or something like this she had to pay the price for a better place and uh, I guess this is how she did she might have been actually even a high school dropout and I'm not completely sure about it definitely a super 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 nice girl sweet girl uh, her age is 30 and she is uh, she's talking about how she was with this guy over there inside of this um, inside of this uh, coupe this who was piloting he was uh, driving this train and um, she was naughty on the MK Ultra, and I became also, uh, she played with me a little bit, yeah, that kind of stuff, like a girly stuff. Girls like to do that kind of stuff. This is all MK Ultra, folks, and they are stressing me out, stressing out these things. This is about uh, a girl. Um, she uh, built her career in Saudi Arabia, um, was also involved. And, uh, you know, this girl's flirted, flirted, flirted. Um, it's pretty much what I explained. All right, she proceeded uh, a great, great, great career. Right, uh, then in modeling and became wealthy and me poor bastard I stayed by myself until the age 50 and boy I deserve it well this is how you are told things but this is not the way in reality things are at all This is what he's talking about. I don't even know what if he said this or not. This is actually a Slovenian girl from... Uh, she must be then from Novo Mesto. Let me see if he says this. Okay, Mia Duchanovic. Mia Duchanovic, probably the, she's from the city of Novo Mesto, from my city. Uh, I would say so. There was one pretty girl, uh, and I don't know what the case was. Uh, and she became really, really famous over there. In Saudi Arabia, she became popular. Uh, she could be from Serbia too, or somewhere, Bosnia or something like this, I have no idea. But I, I think she was really here from, from Novo Mesto, literally. She was from Novo Mesto. Um, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Talk about the Saudi Arabia. Yeah, we were in a Saudi Arabia. We were in... Arab Emirates. I was all over Midis. These people got to see, they got to see the world with me. Don't worry about that stuff. These guys traveled the world. They saw the world that otherwise they would not saw it, see one. This is why, like, 
kids at Fujitsu, let's say, in Poland. It was, I was like a magnet there. It was like, to be around me, it meant that you get to travel, you get to meet interesting people, you get to build your job, career, maybe even buy discounted property, get special financing approved through the local bank, whatever, international bank, stuff like this, folks. Or even maybe get a major contract with some exclusive contract with some company uh, maybe just a product to review a special product to review that would actually boost your career in you were if you were in let's say in a media or something like that interested in uh, would put you ahead of others and so on well modeling and so on it was just like a million reasons to be around me because people that were using me for this stuff or people like that that you get to read like I said in newspapers watch on the TV not that I would want to be around them so this talking about the Saudi Arabia about the city how big it is and a lot of things change it's huge it's three and a half million people Okay, Ljubljana knew, in this case specifically Lord Power, he knew exactly how to diversify the group properly. It all depended where the trips took. Uh, the gentleman I'm talking to, right, he's talking right now, this gentleman is actually, uh, his parents would trace to Bosnia. In Bosnia, you have a very multicultural environment. You have environment, you have a Muslims, uh, and then you have uh, Serbs, Bosnian Serbs, and then you have a Bosnian Croats, uh, and you have also other cultures too. Uh, this is a really colored place. And so he had like a special way to ability and talent, because I think he had some Muslim background in the family to relate to the people from Muslim countries so if it would be something that would be like from a Muslim country then he would get like assignment like that and then he would fly uh, with me to those countries I was subject to MK Ultra and he was just like I'm gonna say like a staff member escort that would have me meet with a people uh, sometimes uh, you know majesties uh, King of Thailand, let's say, and so on. Now we talk about the Sarajevo. Sarajevo always was of a big interest to me. It's a very, very interesting city. I enjoy how much I hate it. I was brought, dropped up to the city where I wanted to see with my own eyes and stuff like this. Yoy. You could not do anything worse to me, actually, than something like this. Since special on top of that, you involve some totally foreign people. No, my serbo croat language skills are like close to excellent, almost like close to the native. And you bring me with some people where they don't even speak any language and stuff like this, and I have to listen to them what this and that. This is like a real nightmare. I think you can relate to that. Now, Sarajo, I want to hear this from his perspective. And you see, he, he, he is very, very acquainted with the Quran. Uh, the girl asked about the whale, uh, Muslim whale women where, and he started, he's really, really expert on, this is very individual, very intellectual individual, he's got a very good background, intellectual, he's well educated, he is quite uh, exceeding uh, in history, it's like a historian, works for the local uh, tours, who provide tourists with information about the city, it's like a tour guide for uh, the city and he's a natural talent for historical cultural things like that 
talks about Vahabitis. Uh, it's also the weather he explains you have to cover yourself because it, the sun would burn you it's a part of the culture over there the people now the girl says also so the skin stays humid I think he said that he was like a year ago over there or something like that. Now, this is really interesting. I'm talking about the Sarajevo and about capital Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I said, I said, uh, I, and what, what exactly, what it, what, how is it now? What it looks like now? What, what is different and so on? He says, oh, Sarovo is phenomenal. I said, always was a phenomenal, but I want to say, yeah, there was a war. There was a very bad war. It was bombardment of the city. A lot of people dead. Tensions, bad tensions. Uh, so I said, but how it's now? It always was a phenomenal, but how is it now? Uh, I said it's still the same as it was and what I mean by this when I ask this question is like people like are like like accepting are they still so cool they were like Sarajevo, Sarajevo Bos Bosnian capital this is like how can I possibly explain this is nothing you see on a TV when you when you when you hear a Muslim and uh, ah, they show these people I don't even condemn them fighting for the freedom uh, in Iraq, uh, in Iran, they are radicalized because of what happened. Who the hell wouldn't be? You lose your home, gets bombarded, your country you had. Uh, Libya was destroyed just before the country was about to take off, even more so. Uh, they bombarded when they took away uh, everything. Uh, people get radicalized, jobless, without the families, burned homes. Uh, Sarajevo, well, this was like a place where, best description, where Christians were welcome. This is like a Muslim city where the Christians were welcome. Jews, they had a Jewish community in Sarajevo. So you would have a, a diversity of people. And since Yugoslavia is a, was a multi-ethnic country, not multi-racial, but multi-ethnic South Slavic, of South Slavic origins, you know, Slovenians, Serbs, Croats, and then Montenegrins, and Macedonians, of course, uh, and Albanians, too, from Kosovo. Um, this was probably the place that you would be probably accepted better, in my opinion, than anywhere else. Uh, everybody liked Sarajevo. Sarajevo was like, uh, whether you were Slovenian or whatever you were, that means that you were, you know, at home, almost, you could say. Oh, he mentioned about the Olympic Games. The first time I was 2004. How is it over there? Happy. The same thing. You know, he pretty much tells me what I expected he's going to say. I'm going to repeat this again. You hear some Turkish language. Uh, let's let's see this here again. Happy, open, more Turkish language. Religious people coming more. I don't know. Uh, I think he said you have some Arabic people coming, Arabs. Now, I want to clarify, this is very important for me. He's, he mentioned Arabs. Yes, yes, yes. I was in Bosnia, in Herzegovina, also with the Arabs, with the investor, with the Arab investors, too. It was stuff like that too. Now there's more to this stuff. There's more to this stuff I have written about on my new site. It's a very, very important stuff. 
more important than I'm not going to even go into why but I felt this is the question that was of my interest they did invest it in Bosnia so to help economically basically I mentioned investors are investors Uh, he tells that there is some kind of a military base in Sarajevo, which I did forgot. I have to say, I was there also with Americans. This is this is the stuff. At the time, as we speak, I have forgotten about. But he tells me this, and I'm I'm shocked. And I remember now. Oh, this is for me a very very unpleasant thing. This is what is it? I mean, you. How can I possibly explain? I was inside of that military base with a government official, with a U.S. government official. The thing about this, this stuff is like extremely unpleasant to me. Sarajevo is like a center of ex-Yugoslavia, like epicenter, like in the center of the Yugoslavia was exactly the city of the Sarajevo, and it's quite unimaginable. But of course, there was a war. Uh, and if you ask me, I hope, uh, well, that does not depend on me, that actually depends on people from, uh, from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, the altercation, this war, the civil war in Yugoslavia was very bad. Uh, American presence, however, I'm going to put it this way, did contribute it's something positive to all this, because it did stop the bloodshed. I actually even salute that right now when I think over. Um, from my perspective, I'm really, really angry about what happened to me in the U.S. Yeah, I'm not going to be hiding the disappointment about the country where I immigrated to just to be... Uh, for the U.S. Constitution to be basically ripped apart, international treaties along with it. Uh, this kind of stuff is, is torture, anti-ultra and stuff like this, just for some kind of political neo-Nazi ideas, goals, or some crazy politicians. This is this is just not uh, a pleasant thought for me. And when it comes to this uh, republics of ex-Yugoslavia, I just I'm not fond to idea of having any kind of uh, I'm going to put it American presence anywhere in Eastern Europe. I dislike it. I'm going to put it this way. I dislike it and I don't feel any need for it. Because if they wanted us to be safe in, in certain situations which did require help, assistance, military assistance, then first of all, they would, it's a simple thing, they would supply, let's say, Ukraine with a proper uh, weaponry so they the country could defend its territorial interests but that was just not the case their priority is a German politic on behalf of whom they set a military boot to the ground the priority is to push a NATO border actually not even a NATO border but tanks ships closer and closer and closer to a Moscow, not even to the Russian border. And this is what, you know, from my perspective, based on experience, the way I was treated in the U.S., makes me extremely uncomfortable. When you come back from the U.S. and you find yourself as a foreigner, literally, in your own home environment, uh, in a country where you were actually told to get the fuck out, we don't want you here anymore, and stuff like this, uh, where you were black this, it's an employment market where you were treated like a hostage, literally like with a knife under your throat, abducted, uh, gaze over the mouth from your bed, taken for a ride with a plane on another continent, and stuff like this. I prefer not that kind of, uh, I'm going to say, presence of military of any kind, because it reminds me too much of uh, neo-Nazi Germany, excuse me, with which we already had an altercation just 75 years ago. So let's continue with this.
This is this is a huge giant ass military base which I was inside and I can actually describe. I don't know if there are any photos on the internet. <laughs> I can tell you when they started to build this base because it grew up more and more and more. This is like we were standing and it was this huge, huge area that, that actually was a real American military base. And it made me extremely uncomfortable about it and angry when I relate myself to, to the memories. But this is just, you know. I'm going to put it this way. In a Bosnia, as far as the Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, we, the people here in the Balkans, are going to have to find a common language. Uh, and the most common language uh, is a mutual understanding for one another, concern for one another. We're all going to speak that kind of language. There'll be no need for any of this military basis. This is the most universal uh, language that we have to learn to speak with one another. This was also the reason why this war exploded uh, after the deceased Marshal Tito. I'm going to put it this way. So, this base did some good. Uh, this base, while well, this base did some good, we have to do better so that we can move on with this human relations and uh, no longer this thing will be required. There's a lot of work to be done in, in, in Bosnia, especially, you know. Well, they say, he said, that you cannot see inside, you cannot see inside of the base, but I was inside of the base, I was inside of this military base, I saw it, I was at least four times with the different American government officials inside of this military base, we would go inside with the top government officials and we would walk uh, this base, and I saw this base very, very, very good from inside what exactly from when it all started when they started to build this base actually I was inside in there I saw this I, I remember when it all started what it was and then the upgrades and so on so. And then he talks to me about the military base, German military base in Kosovo. And uh, for which, however, I have to say I do not remember. I cannot recall a military, German military base in Kosovo. That one I have a difficulty with. I might have been there. I might have been. Honestly, however, I do not recall any memories about that. Maybe uh, if I would look some photos or something like this, however, I did not. I did not, not for American base in Sarajevo, not for um, for the one in, in, in Kosovo. No. About the military base, the one in Kosovo, uh, German military base. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot recall the possibility is, however, that this guy was there. Maybe he had me with me. Maybe something like this was, but uh, maybe it's more than I don't even dare to think about something like this. Let's put it this way. Or maybe don't want to think about something like that. Don't want to know maybe about something like this. Uh, 
Abu Ghanim, uh, in general, he tells me that it's a beautiful place, relaxed, uh, everybody is just cool with one another, people live in a harmony in Sarajevo. It's uh, quite a cosmopolitan place, uh, and whatever you would be from, people would not even realize that you're a foreigner or something like that. Uh, and then he says that outside of the city, uh, it was not so cool to him when he was outside of the city. Yeah, we were on the outskirts of the Sarajevo, and they did something very uncool to me, but uh, I don't actually keep any kind of grudge uh, about stuff like this. It doesn't, you know, uh, it was all kinds of stuff that happened. Um, when I recall the stuff like this, that was like he's gonna say 15 kilometers away from Sarajevo, something outskirts of Sarajevo. It was not so cool to him and this and that. Uh, he probably just did not have any control over whatever it was. Maybe some local politician said, no, it's like this and that, whatever. And the guy is just there and that's about it and this and that. But that really doesn't matter. Um, this kind of stuff under MK Ultra, when you threaten somebody and this and that, this kind of stuff does not do anything to a person. Maybe there are some people that eventually do react to that, that they become intimidated or something like that. With me, it's exactly the opposite the reaction. With me, if you were to accomplish anything, you would have me basically, if I would be upset, if I would be... I would be looking for a justice. That means that I would be hunting you with the police the least. Now, I don't go about that because it's too many people that step out of the shells, step out of the shadow and reach out toward me to help me out. Um, yes, under MK Ultra, I was like a, I was like a lion, like a wounded a lion. I, I was so unhappy about it. Um, completely different reality when not under MK Ultra. Uh, if somebody dared to follow up with some stuff, like they dig into me during MK Ultra with some torture methods or something like this, and then they will try to bring this kind of unpleasant is, let's say, that's how I call it a nuisance in a post MK Ultra period, like that he will try to trigger in me some kind of, uh, you know, resentment feelings and stuff like this, then I would go ahead and I would orient myself, basically that means that I would try to find out what exactly uh, a person, uh, let's say, meant uh, with with his gestures or, or something like that. Uh, just out of curiosity maybe to learn and foremost to let people know that it's not okay the stuff that if it was something like this that was done because geez it did not contribute to anything. This is the kind of stuff that politicians have used as I learned to frustrate person. Uh, let's say you have a community of people and you get somebody do something like really bad within this community people people made they sworn themselves to help you out okay they sworn themselves to help you out and now the politicians know that these people are going to be coming your way they're going to try to help you out and the best thing would be to get somebody that you're going to have a conflict with in real time and that will actually help the politician to disband, basically disperse these crowds of people that are otherwise reaching out to you. And if you would just go and pick up on those kind of negative signals, you could actually destroy the whole MK Ultra case. That's why it's really, really important, uh, regardless of it, to keep cool, uh, present issue as something that does not really have had any kind of impact. Uh, this is how I do it on me, on my thinking process, but if somebody had some other issues that we want to stress about, uh, whether those issues concerned uh, the period, MK Ultra period, or is it something that he think he has an impact on me, let's say, in the present, with some kind of aggressive behavior that I would like to know about. There's nothing wrong with that stuff. 
There is nothing wrong with that stuff. Uh, it, it's all good with the Sarajevo. With the Sarajevo, it's all good. It's all good, whatever. I don't have any kind of problems of any kind. Uh, it was the stuff also that went on in Croatia. Uh, and in Serbia, uh, and this, and in Slovenia, and all over the place. This is the stuff that does not touch me in any way. I am completely immune to this. I don't care. Uh, it was guys that did, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff and this and that, but when they meet me in real time, it was a completely different stuff. They would want to go and buy me and tickets and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. They were so happy to see me and so on and so forth. So this is the kind of stuff that doesn't touch me. Um, the point here is people did not even know what the hell what I did not know. This is a mass MKO trend. That's that's what's important. The human relations must prevail in this and something positive must come out of it. I don't concentrate on any other stuff like this. Let's go on. <laughs> it was in the evening, it was some kind of I remember almost like a barricade. Uh, I remember like outskirts, like outside of the Sarajevo or whatever. And it was a blah, 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 blah. A group of kids, what was it? I'm not gonna say a teenagers, but yeah, you know, kids like 17, 18, 20. Who the hell is smarter than they are, right? He says, you can walk all over the city at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, all over the city, but at night not. Uh, on the outskirts, not. Yeah, you can walk on the outskirts, too. There are good people there, too. The thing about it is that he wanted to remind me of this incident. This was at night, whatever. He said, I would not walk, blah, blah, you know, outside of the city. <laughs> uh, the girl says, my mom told me that when it's dark, I'm not supposed to walk by myself yeah, across the city of the novel master. My mom told me. And it never happened to me ever, anything. She says, but now within the last few years, I am actually really thinking about uh, if it's good for me to walk at night. Alone. Alone. Sarajevo is good, Sarajevo is nice. Sarajevo did not change, Sarajevo never radicalized, uh, still is with the same soul city as it was before, and that's the main thing. That's basically what I wanted to know, because I know that the radicalization, in whatever culture, in whatever part of the world, uh, does have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous price to pay, where there is a radicalization, the human relations, there's no place for human relations, basically. No place for human relations mean death of the society. He says, but in, Rab in Saudi Arabia is not so open. Of course it's not so open. Sarajevo is a very special place. 
Oh, I mentioned about uh, Shah Pahlavi, about Iran, how Iran was a prosperous at one time, but then radicalism took over and and the whole human relations did what it what it does, what it did anywhere in any part of the world. So these guys, these are not just ordinary guys. These are quite a little diplomats. They know what they are talking about, these guys. They are, um, they were used for these missions because they were really good at Okay, now you heard. Now they mentioned San Sebastian, but a little earlier the guy was moving on a chair. You will not, unless your memory is like really sharp, you will not have ability to connect all that stuff. Now, hopefully that uh, <laughs> if there is somebody out there that was subject to this kind of stuff that would not go through the stages I did. I was actually hospitalized. I was actually locked. I was actually told that if I'm going to only mention the word MK Ultra, the ambulance vehicle is going to come to pick you up. I did mention that magic word MK Ultra. The ambulance vehicle came to pick me up, walked right inside of this room, grabbed me like this, and took me out. Just was gone. The same moment I mentioned the magic word MK Ultra, just from mentioning the word MK Ultra. And so when they give you some kind of diagnosis for which there is no uh, no no place no no any kind of explanation for anything and you know uh, and you engage in this kind of talk if you don't know how to connect these things I have proof that my thinking is based on logic on memory clear solid memory because I have just demonstrated San Sebastian and um, this electric chair that was uh, in this place during my absence in your absence in the United States of America of course I was not present officially in Europe anywhere in between 95 all the way to mid 2006 or anywhere else for that matter in this globe except in Ecuador uh, so if you don't know how to connect this kind of stuff what can I say then good luck to you then there's there is uh, you know danger out there for you. You have to have a memory. You have to have things in line or sequenced properly or you can get yourself in a trouble. So you see they give you a hint but if you would not know about the stuff you're talking about you could come out like really weird, crazy maybe even. Yeah, then it would be really dangerous. I only do the stuff that I have absolutely the proof about. Yeah? San Sebastian. This is a San Sebastian, and I don't even see any kind of chair, anything that I mentioned that ever was located here, and it was.
there was actually in the corner there was like a it was like a green fence you know like some kind of green uh, like a fabric literally green and then uh, in the corner was this thing that they would try to write whatever oh, no. there you have it that's the way it was now they talk about some other locations uh, they talk about some other locations like I said this is a very nice group of young people I was quite fortunate to go with look I was more with these people around when I was subjected to MK Ultra than I was in a real life at least somebody took me someplace uh, I mean if I want to say something positive about them okay so this 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 young people I, I enjoy presence of the young people let's put it this way now they talk about uh, some place with the name crystal or whatever um, yeah whatever the San Sebastian bar is actually here okay the dog takes advantage of me she comes to me and I had to pet her with a pleasure of course I don't I do it Yeah, these guys they did they did tour me all over the place and I hanged out with them. You know, and the politicians the politicians that were using these opportunities to travel elsewhere back and forth, they meet foreign delegations and this and that, stuff like that. And yeah, I was quite fortunate to be around them if I had a chance. They would come to pick me up and have me with them. So Okay, now they're telling me about absolutely all the bars in Novo Mesto, my god. Uh, it was all kinds of stuff. Uh, how many people actually saw me, uh, I have no idea. I want to know what you're doing for the new year. Are we going to have some kind of party or something? Uh, <laughs> they tell me, if we tell you, we're going to have to kill you simply. So I guess I don't want to know that. <laughs> oh, now they bring somebody else on a picture. Uh, maybe that's even something I should not say. He says, they said, they say now, maybe we're going to be at the Milan. Yeah. Mr. Milan Kuchan is... This is an ex-Slovenian president, a very prominent person also, what used to be Yugoslavia. He does, he does have, for the new year, he always does have a big parties. And people from all over the place. He's a party man, actually. Uh, and welcomes these young people, likes young people to associate with them too. And yeah, it just happened. Uh, we were at his place once, I remember that. Um, he would visit this house many times. Uh, Mr. Milan Kuchon, I never did the haircut for him, on him. I always wanted to because he's a great, he gives good tips. He's, he's a good tip giver too. Uh, and I say this jokingly because the guys, he actually, Sergey from Belarus did and he gave him a really, really good tips. And he brought some other guys 
his age, whatever, friends, uh, that they gave business to Sergei. So, that kind of stuff, this kind of people, uh, young people. Yeah, jour means party uh, in a plain. Every year Milan has a party. One time I clearly remember that he had a party for the new year. Okay, now it's about uh, Pink TV or something like this. This is some local dude that uh, does his TV business. A reporter or something like this was... We were in some kind of studio, I remember that stuff too, yes. Yeah. So all this stuff I remember. Uh, I guess that he mentioned Burma uh, a little earlier and asked, when were you, I asked him, when were you in Minamar? He did earlier, of course. I mistaken that with uh, Burma. Uh, why I say Minamar? Okay, why do I say Minamar? Minamar, Minamar because um, Minamar is because there's a lot, a lot of beautiful women there in Minamar. Minamar, it's like whoa, this is really a place that uh, it was a lot of laughter that went on with me over there in Minamar. People had a really good time with me in Minamar. So they had also in China and. Uh, I bet in Thailand too and this and that, but in Myanmar, I was actually told you're gonna pick up your bride and you get the uh, 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 out of this place here, you understand? You're not gonna be hanging around, you you pick up your woman and you get the uh, we don't want to see you anymore here. The police officers told me like this in Myanmar and in Myanmar I was not only with this gentleman, but one time there was also politicians. It was actually Vucic too, and it was Bart Bahar too. And, and uh, Vucic was telling Bahar, said, I have no idea how we're gonna get this guy out of here now. This is the way it was in Minamar. I wanted to know about this Minamar. Uh, and he says, no, 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 this was in Thailand, this was in Thailand. Yeah, these guys had a really good time. This gentleman actually was, I hope he still is, very ambitious, hard-working man. He got involved, one of the first people who got involved in MK Ultra. He was the first one in the group who got involved in MK Ultra this one the one he talks right now he um, he wanted to get ahead in his life and the problem was um, he didn't have he didn't have the money he didn't have uh, he didn't have nothing he could use at his advantage leverage towards success to get wealthy quickly and so he met Back then he met Borut Pahor, he met these people, and you're talking about year, I don't know, 96, whatever, yeah. Uh, he wanted the job, he wanted the job because guys got good jobs. And this is how he got involved in it, he was curious, like normal young people who wouldn't, uh, he wanted to. Yeah, but the problem was he had a high school only, I think gymnasium or something like that. So Borut Pahor told him, man, if you want... Um, became his mentor. He told him, if you want uh, become, if you want some kind of job, like a prominent job, something, 
uh, you're going to have to go and you're going to have to complete a uh, college degree, university. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to study and you're going to get this stuff. You're going to pick up this whatever it is that you want to do. You're going to tell me and uh, you're going to start to study. And when you have this kind of qualifications, now we're going to get you really some kind of good job, some kind of good uh, position that's going to fit your um, attributes, your qualifications in some corporation, something as a director or something of the company or something like that, that you will get ahead in life. Um, this is basically one information I'm going to give you because this is very relevant to the end of this video because through this information I actually completely identify the whole group just by asking uh, a gentleman with whom I walk uh, toward back toward home. Oh, that's why. He says 2003. Uh, let's let's hear this again. So he was he was in Burma in 2003. Okay. He said 2003, you're going to hear why I asked this question. He says, how do you know? How do you know this? Wow, he was all over this place. Thailand, Myanmar. Like I said, why I know. For, the, it dependent on the regions. What kind of region that they selected certain guys to go. They deemed would be the best to accompany me. These guys uh, were like some kind of uh, attorneys for me. This, I was causing all kinds of problems, all kinds of stupidities, clowning, and they wanted to have some experienced people around me. So we are talking here definitely about a group of people that are quite uh, with developed diplomatic skills, I would rate. They're not just any kind of regular guys who here right there. Any of these guys could serve really, really well on a foreign missions as a diplomat, as an embassy diplomat or something like that. These are not just some kind of a regulars or something like that. Thailand, Thailand. Thai, Thai King was involved in this stuff from beginning. So this was the group that would go oftentimes in a, in a locations. But, but, but for the West, for the Paris, for the Britain especially, and for the Canada, and sometimes even for the US too, the one who would travel to the West, they pick up the beautiful ladies. And one of the beautiful ladies that would accompany me, the main one, the number one, that was a nurse from psychiatric hospital in Ljubljana, and her name is Andreja Jeric. She was the one. So the, what they would do is they would they would diversify for different public, for different people, use different uh, approach. That's how that went. He said that he went there with a job and he was there like uh, three days uh, on the uh, business trip. Uh, what did I ask now? I joke. Uh, what is she? No, she said something. She said, yeah, 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 yeah. She was, uh, she had this plates with the French music. I was at her place uh, and she played this music with this French uh, chanson, this kind of music. And to me, this, this stuff was like Andre and Keltra, you know, I wanted to have something all the time exciting. Uh, I was bored like hell. And she put that music on this French music. You know, I wanted to hear maybe Abba or something like this, that kind of music. And she put this French. French music, French and so, the plates, gramophone and stuff. And I was like, my God, I said, no, 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 no. I said to myself, I said, there's only two things 
you can do really bad to me. Either study me uh, how the houses were built in, in what sequence in what order, uh, or what you can do is you can you can do something to me with with French chanson music. Uh, I would say that I am I am not a fan. Uh, I would be around a lady that likes that, but this is not exactly my kind of music. It's not exactly what I prefer, really. Uh, I am maybe more into other music, maybe even hip hop or something like that. All kinds of modern music, maybe music from 90s, 80s. Uh, but French and so on. This is this is not very close to me, really. But this was her passion. This is basically what she, as a teenager, where she was collecting this plates, this kind of music. She says she's gonna she's gonna play tomorrow for herself this French chanson music. I miss them, she says. French chanson music. Now, if you know French, I wish I would. Uh, probably I could use this as an MK Ultra proof, another one. God knows what the guy is singing. Uh, but he is singing a pretty, pretty good and uh, very decent French. Okay, maybe I can do something little here. Let's see this. I will not say anything. I'm not going to get into it. She says we're not going to be allowed to leave normally until the summertime. This tape is edited, the original tape. There is more to it. We discuss more stuff, but I really concentrate only on the stuff that is relevant to the issues I have spoken about. Oh, this is the stuff I seems to have should have removed and I somehow did not we are talking about some kind of uh, religion it's also called uh, Satanism and uh, I am not a friend of the Satanism uh, this gentleman I spoke with is a historian he is a tour guy he is an expert uh, in all kinds of stuff and, and uh, has a much deeper knowledge than I have. He's not a friend of that either. Uh, but we discussed different issues. Like I said, this tape is edited and he explained issues behind uh, Satanism, which I definitely do not believe and don't want to even know about for that matter. I am ignorant in that sense. Uh, but Franciscani, this has something to do with the novel master. I actually, he took me to uh, to meet this Franciscan, these are people who came from Bosnia, something like this, very special people too. One day I'm looking forward, I hope they're still alive, that I would go and spend some time with them. They live in Slovenia. Uh, let, let me hear what he says. Uh, 
We they came from Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, since very 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 I don't know how very long time ago and live now in Slovenia already very very long time. Good. There was a special order within the church. They, they are in the city of the in the city of the normal Mesa, they're very special. Uh, Roman Catholic Church. Oh my god, they're talking about 400 years back to the year exact, I don't. Okay, I don't know nothing about this. Um, <laughs> okay, the girl reminds us that we need to go home. It's a curfew here in Slovenia at 9 o'clock in the evening you are not to walk on the street anymore so we have to head home now <laughs> we, uh, we say goodbye to each other and I head home and there's a little portion here I cut out but the guy catches me up as I walk toward home and we have like a little talk before we separate he on or in his direction and I go in my direction a little bit more I'm gonna publish about this group maybe I'm gonna find I'll tell you what maybe at the end of this video that I will something do about the bakery shop in Ljubljana I never thought about that maybe I do that or something we are going in the same direction come Ah, he's asking me where I live. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. He, he, and no one else, he, sometimes he would just let me walk uh, back home alone. And he would be just a few meters behind me out of curiosity, how maybe, uh, but always next to me. To observe how I would react, what I would react, what how, and this is the way it was under Ankiotra. You're dropped up and you're walking back toward your home. The difference between basically between the reality when you walk, it's it is it is danger when you are with someone. Uh, you actually become so automated that sometimes you could eventually walk. You would not even understand. You would not even realize that you walk. You just walk, walk like a robot. Like your mind go completely to sleep. Like you, like you would be walking like to a certain location, like totally semi-retarded, completely, without even knowing what you are doing. Basically, uh, you become so automated that you almost take this kind of after so many years, after the stuff that happens to you that it becomes to you eventually even pointless to think about the freedom issues. Now you see the MK Ultra it's, uh, it's got a few very very dangerous uh, points in it. I could not afford myself as a matter of fact I did not allow anyone for that matter uh, to take me MK Ultra seriously. Because I think I think that people who take MK Ultra seriously, I think they rip them apart. Because once you open uh, yet another part of the brain where is located this issue, you know, of taking things seriously, um, you know, what happens is you start to eventually, I think, view the whole thing as 
through the real life experience and I think that there is a big 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 danger they try to do this to me they try me to see it this way but I have refused and refuted their demands from me on numerous times with displaying even odd behavior and as odd and as stupid as I possibly could ridiculous I didn't even care about how ridiculous I looked like because I think I deemed that uh, if you get yourself in this kind of situation, you know, due to the amount of time I was hurt, taken advantage of, and you're totally, totally defenseless. You're totally defenseless. They have a complete control over you, and you would, you would start to display seriousness. That means that as much as serious, as much as competence, as much as you would display, give them, basically that's exactly how much they could hurt you in return so if you want to get hurt really really badly all you would have to do is basically take it seriously you see I was safe as long as I had my area my space in which I was basically in control because I would not allow them to take me to that kind of level that I would constantly take the whole thing seriously but as soon as I would open myself up to the degree that they would, that I would take it so seriously, I think probably this is actually even what separates me between people who become uh, terminally ill because of exposure to MK Ultra, especially over such a prolonged periods of time, and some miracles that somehow survive this kind of ordeals. Uh, never ever allow anyone if you just happen so you're gonna start to take it seriously just think about in real life what happens to you when you start to swear when you start to take insults personally what happens to you you are in a trouble you start to develop you suffer uh, psychosis basically and once you start doing this, it just builds up and you go, it goes to, to higher and higher and higher. And that's a very dangerous element between MKUltra and the real world. My quality, my strength was, was always in ability to separate the two in two different issues. And I did this so successfully that my personalities never ever matched one another. The personality from MKUltra and personality uh, in a real world, in real time, never ever managed, matched one another. They started to match one another when I, when I was so pissed off in, in 2012, uh, up to 2015, 2016, that, that I was angry. I started to get agitated and angry at absolutely everything because it started to get so violent, the whole thing. The more, th you know, but other than that, never ever. And it's thanks to that issue exactly why I did manage to survive and drive this thing through without being affected mentally in absolutely any way. Yeah, he asked me how I'm gonna go back, and I tell him, yeah, I'll go here. Uh, how many times I walk and through the forest with him, and so that's why he does. That's why he asked me. He wanted to remind me as much as possible. I can remind myself of the girl. The girl was a high school dropout. She dropped out of the high school. I'm telling you, she was like a 16 years old, beautiful girl. Wow, she was beautiful girl and drug, drug, drugged up as I was. She has been a lot uh, around like since eternity because the guy is gonna say that she's young, she's not being around for too long. Wow, she has been around since from forever. A high school dropout, two year earlier, and that's what her life was. That's the way it was. I remember when she dated the first guy, when she was like 16, that was actually like the reason why she remained as a dropout from the high school. I remember that stuff too, if you want to know.
She was at the gymnasium, this girl. I remember her own gymnasium. You know a lot about the novel master so much. <laughs> you are some kind of uh, historian, I remember, because he always had this hobby to to know everything about <coughs> about the novel master. Uh, especially, he was concentrating in the novel master. This guy would know absolutely about everything the history of Slovenian uh, historian, literally. And he tells now that he is a tourist guide for the novel mist. Uh, so, uh, I told him, but you also have some kind of school, you are very educated, he says, uh, for this. And he says, I have, uh, I'm a pedagogue and I'm a sociologue, something like that. So, it's university. Now I go about the gentleman who said in 2003 he was in Thailand. Uh, I just wanted to say at the same time when I think about the gentleman who talked about the Thailand and, and Myanmar and all this, if I properly remember he completed, and I was going to say university, like high university, that's exactly. You know, and the point is that when he said 2003, the moment he said 2003, I knew that he just completed his university. That means that he completed his university sometimes in like 2001, 2002, something like that. Bingo. So he completed his university then in the year 2001, if that was the case. 2001, maybe 2002. Now he did cut in front of me, uh, and he said that he completed, I don't know what kind of university. Uh, we can do that again. But he did not know that I am actually going to pull out and say that this was exactly the time when he completed his university. Uh, you see, this guy I'm talking about is about my age, even a little bit older than myself. And that means that um, he spent some time outside of the school after he completed his high school, his gymnasium, whatever he completed. He was many, many years on a job market already. So I would not know exactly when did he complete it, the school, the university, unless I would actually know him in person. And I know that he told me that time I completed the school, that means it was about 2002 then for university. Now we can travel, now we're gonna go now. I got, uh, we're gonna go travel and stuff like this. I got assignment and this and that now. So that's that basically. So there you have, by just by doing this, I demonstrated him something else. And that's basically completes my knowledge about the entire group now. And I say this is really, really interesting, I tell him, because he is of my age. You know, that. so that way I explained that I would not know when he completed the university. So usually you complete high school, right? And you continue to university. This is a normal procedure, but in this case, this was not the procedure. In this case, it was a different procedure. This guy was many, many years on, on the job market. Then, because of this mentor uh, from Ljubljana, who became actually uh, Borat Pahar, he decided to go on with it, I think in the year 97, I would say, 97, 96, 97, and that takes about five years away for a, a university degree, which he completed then. Yeah.
So you see bingo right there. Now he is a little bit uh, embarrassed. Uh, maybe he's a little bit confused right now. Because, you see, he cut me when he said university, this and that. He was fast enough to say that, but he did not expect my coming out and doing something like this. Uh, he's three years older than myself. That means that he's 52 years old. So that was a good job. Uh, I think he uh, did not even have to do this next to the job. He went like a full time and studied that. Let's repeat this again because this is awesome. Okay, so the gentleman who was with me in Thailand and in Myanmar and all over uh, Asia, he completed international relations. So that's like total diplomat right there. You're a really interesting team. Oh yeah, they did. They did. They did have. They did have uh, some blondie girl. There was some blondie girl, uh, and it was a good-looking one too. And uh, they were not happy. They were really, really unhappy. She was not part of the team, though. This girl was always part of the team. This girl just. These are really gentlemen, these guys, and she just feels much younger than what we are, but she feels so good about being around them, uh, because they're like a patrons, like really, really gentlemen, really, really soft, nice guys to be around with, so uh, felt so safe, so good around them that, uh, and you know, they, they care about one another, you know, that's another thing, they saw her they saw her like part of the team and they look out for one another and they were not happy when this blondie and there was a blondie that appeared. They, don't, they did not wanna, uh, they were not happy about any of that stuff. Yeah, she was, she was not part of the crew, no. Uh, the girl who was here right now, she always was part of your team, man. I say, I said, and he's gonna say, no, 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 she's she's very young, or she's only a part of this team now. We know each other like for two years, yeah. She says, just last two years. Oh yeah. She's very young. She's very young. She is young, she's very young, compared to us dudes, she is really, really young. But now, let me demonstrate something else here. Uh, let's go. We're gonna go a little bit on a train station, we're gonna do it like this, just like on a fast track. Okay, I think, yeah. my opinion let's see this thing here she used to work giving this um, good stuff right inside in here at first inside they have like they had inside like where you would go and they would give this delicious uh, donuts this is like her first job because she was a dropout but her standing improved quickly uh, quickly not so quickly not so damn and quickly but this was like a, for her this was like a breakthrough she advanced with this 
and started and got a job in a real bakery shop so I am trying to because that was like a really elegant uh, bakery shop but you know what I don't know much about Ljubljana I am like really really the guy from the village when it comes to Ljubljana I remember the locations and stuff like this but do you think I know much about Ljubljana I don't uh, this is gonna have to wait uh, according to let me let me just go maybe from aerial perspective that I would be more efficient with this uh, let's see this here what is on this side Ah, huh, okay, 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 okay. Maybe this is where the mistake was. Okay, uh, listen, this is about... Let me see what a 500 meters looks like on a map. Three, four, five hundred meter. <sighs> or the bar, Ljubljana, I don't know. Yeah, this is for something I, I actually really took on a little bit too much here. There are some such a beautiful baker shops that this is just what I'm doing right now is not it's not it's not just this is just a baker shop that was very elegant uh, kind of a prestigious baker shop and this is where she got the job like you know after how long uh, it was like a year and a half, two years, she landed that job. And she was like really, really, really pleased. Uh, her pay uh, really, really, really improved. And she was always so happy to see me. Yeah, now I know who she is. Yeah, but this is how the MK Ultra memory works, folks. This is the way things are here. Um, I'm going to have to look a little, spend more time seeing Ljubljana a little bit more because uh, I always find whatever I want to find but I didn't pay enough attention and it just came to me about all this stuff as I go over this conversation this is how it works let's go we we would go back from Ljubljana with her to Novo Mesa with a train and um, I was like and that was before that was before this mental hospital stuff I don't know was it 2010 2008 I don't know what the year was and she was counting some kind of money and stuff like that and she was really happy but kind of I I could feel that her heart was kind of broken because of my situation she had a really difficulty feeling. She had she felt for me a lot, this girl. Uh what she said her age is? Uh, what, what, what did he say? I don't even know what. I gotta ask her about her age.
we exchange the knowledge we exchange the knowledge about uh, a house and this and that and actually here is where we separate I am a little bit worried about because it was more than one girl involved also in this stuff in Ljubljana and it just might be that this was the second round that means a little time adjustment that means maybe and they would even go home so she had another colleague from the novel master yo that is true there was another another girl and that was a really really beautiful girl but uh, no I did not go wrong about anything the timing I did wise timing okay she must be then school wise that she left probably school sometimes I would say I estimate in 2010 I would say and the other girl was much earlier the other girl was probably go to much earlier okay I get it uh, and so her age according to this from what I hear that would be like 2010 exactly 2012 so that's 18 plus 8 that's 26 years she is 26 years old this girl I'll know so because she dropped out two years earlier from high school that means that she was 16 that means she went to Ljubljana with me inside of I went with her and then we separated. I went to inside the mental hospital. She went whatever. Uh, in year 2012, so dropout, that's two years, that's 2012. And um, she was at that age, obviously, she was 10, 18 years old. And uh, then you have. Um, you gotta add another eight years that's 26 she's not more than 28 years old really she's young eh? I think oh yes there was another girl Okay, we separate, we go each uh, his way. Yes, boy, there was another girl. And that was like a super, 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 super hot girl right here from Novel Nesto. Uh She knows her very well. No, that one is not Blondie. That's yet another girl. Uh, briefly, the two work together. Uh, the girls would even come out to work to Ljubljana. Strange enough, she too worked in a bakery. So there you have it. All these people know exactly what I am talking about. Um, she got taken really, really fast. That one did not even last. She commuted to Ljubljana and back maybe one, two years before she got married. That's all I wanted you to understand about this... Uh, domestic and even international how people how people became involved in this uh, traveling uh, give their company me and stuff like that how I find myself in other countries you know, foremost per diplomats foremost per governments foreign governments all kinds of interests stuff like that none of which would be mine but since it did happen, and I had no control over, especially in this type of circumstance, we also have to do the best out of the situation. That's pretty much what I want to do with my life, with whatever is left out of my life. Thanks for watching this video, folks. Um, this, again, this was recorded on December the 23rd, 2020, uh, date-wise. December 9, 2020. That's basically on my birthday anniversary. All right. So December 9, 2020. That's all I need to say for this video. Thanks for watching. Till next time.